everyone. Welcome to Arena Talks Fantasy and Sci-Fi. I'm your host Arinda, and today we're talking about Battlestar Galactica, the series from 2004, with Maria Travis. A group of humans aboard a battleship, Battlestar Galactica, are forced to abandon their planet after being attacked by Cylons. They try to evade the Cylons while searching for their new true home, Earth. Battlestar Galactica is set in a distant star system, where a civilization of humans lives on a group of planets known as the Twelfth Colony of Kobol. In the past, the colonies have been at war with an android race of their own creation, known as the Silence. With the unwritten help of a human scientist named Gilius Baltar, the Silence launched a sudden sneak attack on the colonies laying waste to the planet and devastation their population. Out of the population of several billion, there are about 50,000 human survivors. Most were aboard civilian spaceships that were not near the initial attack. Of all the colonists' fleet, the Bellstar Galactica appears to be the only military capital ship that survived the attack. Under the leadership of Colonel Fleet Officer Commander William Bill Adama and President Laura Roslin, the Galactica and its crew take up the task of leading the small future fleet of survivors into space in search of a flabbed 13th colony known as Earth. I am not really into the version of Battlecard Galactica, the series from 2004. But who knows after this, maybe I will dare to try and watch it again. Like all series, I couldn't get into this version of a reboot. Well, today my guest is Maria Trevor, and we are going to talk about uh, Buttstar Galactica. Hello, Maria. Hi, hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm good. I'm always uh, ready for a conversation about Buttstar Galactica, so... Here we are. I'm excited. Yeah. So, <laughs> when did you start coming in contact, or, or uh, how did you get involved with Battlestar Galactica? Well, it was a few years ago, and it was uh, a few years after the series um, finished. Right, uh, the series finished in two thousand eight, nine, more or less. That was uh, last season, and uh, I only heard about it in 2014 well um i have this friend who had been for years she had been telling me you have to watch this and i was like bella what i was like i'm not very interested in that probably i was expecting like aliens and this kind of stuff and uh, i was not really listening to her right but um, in 2014 i was um, i was sick and i was home and uh, it, it, uh, i was off, off work for five months and i hadn't really i, I really had nothing to do uh, and she kept telling me now that you have time you should try this you should try this so i i just started to, to, to watch the series and uh, it really carried me through my entire uh, like sick leave and and not just entertaining me but also like helping me with all the different um, topics that the series covers, right? Which are very profound, uh, in many moments about what the human condition uh, is uh, and how to overcome uh, different uh, or difficult circumstances and everything. So I really, really uh, drank the series in and, and learned uh, as as I went, right? And uh, it, was a, it was not just like watching a series for me, it was an experience. It was a, a life experience, right? And, um, and that was more or less it i mean i i i probably would would have never watched it if it weren't for that circumstance that i had nothing to do and i had to entertain myself somehow so <laughs> okay but 
I must say, uh, I saw the reason uh, the series recently in total again because when it was aired, I couldn't uh, I couldn't follow it, and mm-hmm. now I can. I must say, it's, it's a brilliant series. I really liked it, and uh, but I also must say it's very um, realistic. It could be also in about well, what can I say about twenty. 40, 50 years from now, we could be in the same situation. I think that's one, one thing I like about it. And when we talked before, you already said, well, I'm really a sci-fi geek. So uh, how did BSG uh, work for you as in sci-fi series? I think, well, um, it was different from what I expected from sci-fi, right? I I have been other I have been seeing other uh, sci-fi shows that I liked. So it it was not the first time for me that I was uh, like watching a sci-fi show I liked. Um, but I found it different and um, as you said, very realistic. I think that's that's one of the things that drew me in uh from the first moment and even if the start is a little bit like slow they take their time to set the tone and to to uh and to really show you who's who and what uh, each character uh, is there uh, for right uh, they take a while to to do that and i was like wondering uh what well, i don't know really what this show is about but um interested enough to 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 keep going and i think the realism uh, and um, that's one of, of the main assets of the show because it makes uh, all the characters more relatable right it makes all the characters like it could be yourself it could be you and your friends it could be us in a few years and it's it's um it's interesting what you said that we this could be us in maybe 20 years or 30 years because when it was uh, airing in 2000, 2003, um, it it was compared or like um, when it was compared to, to real life situation, it was 9-11 mostly because this show came after 9-11, right? And now we're almost 20 years later and we're saying this could be us in 20 years. So... Uh, that tells you a lot about uh, the, the, the the depth, the importance, uh, and how this show is, is um, meaningful and relatable uh, for us as humans. Probably, uh, no matter uh, the circumstances that uh, we as a world, we as a global society, are in right now. Yeah, and what I maybe it's also that they pick up the. Of course, it is. It's futuristic. They we talk about uh, computers who are looking really like humans, and I think the fact about that that they put like that on the line, it's just. I think we um, they already have androids like uh, human futures, but in the series, it was really. And and I remember when I saw at first that those four silence that w- humans that are on Battlestar Galactica like um, the XO the chief, um, what's her name? She was one of the advisors of the president and <laughs> yeah, Tori yeah, Foster. Yeah, and there was someone else. When they discovered that they were uh, Cylons, I was in shock. I was thinking, oh my God, this can't be happening, you know? And I think the fact of that, they put that uh, point in, also in the point of view of us as human, that if we could see, okay, who will be a Cylon and who not? I know people would be scared. And you see that in the in the reaction of, Adama as well, yeah. that when he find out that his ex or his best friend is a Cylon, he totally lost it. Yeah. And I think the main lesson there, or one of the, one of the lessons there, is that it doesn't matter 
who you are if you are loyal if you're if you're a friend right or if you are uh, someone who is going to come along with me no matter what and i mean we had in that final fight scene we had the main the president's main advisor and i must best friend the engineer in charge of everything <laughs> in that ship <laughs> right uh, and uh and well two more two more people who were also um key to the plot and to, to, to the entire to the entire run run of the series yeah, right so um I mean what happens inside you or inside me as humans when you realize that you're not who you thought you were or that you have different um like you're capable or of, of something else that you 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 never thought you you'd be because of your circumstances or your your we all have beliefs about ourselves we think we know who we are and suddenly uh, life uh, throws different like situation challenges at us and we may end up finding that we are someone else or we may end up becoming like someone else in in a specific area or aspect right so um there's a lot to talk about uh about the final five and the and discovering their their silence and how you choose also and i love uh here it's uh, colonel tai who says that uh and it's not i'm going to use the different words but basically the idea is i do choose who i am i have been this officer my entire life and i'm i'm loyal to this man and I don't care if you call me human, silent, or whatever you want. Uh, I, I get to choose who I am, and this is who I am right now. Who I, who I, am. I, I have been this all my life, and, and, and that's it. No. So I, it speaks a lot about, um, about uh, your personal uh, choice, your personal conscience, your personal beliefs, your, your, your loyalties. Uh, and in the end, uh, what you do is what you are, right? Uh... Exactly. Let's talk a little bit about the characters in the series. Is there any character that you like or like talk about? Well, I like, I like all of them or most of them, really. I mean, that's one of the wonderful things that I can relate to. to most of them in different uh, moments and situations. I was very, 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 and I am still very invested in, in Adama and Roslyn, right? Like the two leaders of the fleet, like the parents in a way, um, with all their challenges, with all their flaws, the dynamics, with, like between them, like uh, going from uh, like butting heads to, to kind of find their finding a common ground and cooperating them falling in love right uh, and that's one of the one of the things that kept me uh, very interested during the entire series mm, but uh, really I could uh, talk about pra pra practically anyone there uh, I hated the Baltar like many people probably did uh, during the series and I found myself loving him in his very last scene when he, like, uh, he comes full circle and he realizes that um, um, that it's okay to come from from this 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 planet. He comes from that he has been trying to 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 disguise and to reject during the the entire series. And, and in that very last scene, it's like I know about farming because my father was a farmer and I come from here and I don't want I, I want to acknowledge this right and I found, found myself crying with him uh, so um, uh, and that's one of the things that uh, it's very powerful in BSG I think the idea of redemption right all characters so I think probably I, I don't know all but most of them at least get some sort of redemption during mm. this, this human trip because it's really a human human journey more than a, than a intergalactic journey i don't know are you interested in or do you want me to talk about anyone specifically well 
Um, the one thing what really was for me noticeable was that because I also are known with uh, the 90, uh, let me see, 78 version is that, but um, Starbuck was there a man and in this series Starbuck a female, she was very daring and in one way I like her but in the other way I was saying Girl, come on! Is this just you, or is this because <laughs> you are a pilot and you are just that much daring in a way, you know? Yeah, I happen to watch the the original one, and I'm not. Uh, uh, I think I should really, because that's what, where everything else comes from, right? In a way, even if they got the inspiration and got some characters like. In the same way and completely change others or uh, change gender like with Starbuck, right? Uh, but that's the source of everything. And uh, I really, I know there's been this, um, like this disappointment uh, among the original series fans uh, because they were changing, like the tone of the series, they were mm. changing gender, they were changing changing the race of, of some of them, like uh, like um, Boomer or, or Colonel Tai, I get the disappointment because if they are if they were going to remake BSG now, I I I I can't feel myself like going. Uh, I can feel the risk there, like I, they're going mm. to that someone or something I I love and put in someone else or something else there. Or, who I, I'm not going to recognize or I'm not going to like. I mean, when you really li like something a lot, uh, you reject uh, the idea of like someone else touching it or, or changing it, right? But at the same time, I think um, that BHG uh, reimagined uh, is there because the orig original was there. And uh, the best thing I can do, uh, and that's one of the things that the series calls for uh, is to stay open-minded mm, right? yeah open-minded and if i am enjoying this series because someone remade something that existed 40 years ago i uh, the least i can do is to just say okay let's let's see what's coming right uh, you know and if they change starbucks uh, gender again or if Roslyn is i don't know blonde and uh, whatever it is i mean I, I i don't care that's that's what creativity is about right and we yeah. should be allowed to be creative and the outcome may be wonderful it may be okay uh, we may like it we may not but we uh, uh, we have a personal like obligation also sci-fi fans because in sci-fi uh, anything can happen right so we mm -hmm. we, we Oblige, yeah, to 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 stay open-minded and to. Do you think, or do you know, if there is being, uh, if they are making now a new reboot or a follow-up series of what they already have of BSG? Uh, there have been talks about uh, like a remake, reboot, re something. I don't know exactly what what it's going to be. Um, I'm not completely up to date, but mm -hmm. uh, the th last thing I heard is that uh, it seems to be stopped for now, right? So they're not uh, well. There, there's, there's a pandemic. I, I'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. you have heard about it, <laughs> and that probably make make things a little bit harder for for everyone to like to cast. Um, actors and to develop the plot and to get the writers and to probably everything right so but I, I really don't know if it happens at some point i'm fine i'm fine i know i'm going to miss uh, trisha helfer in that uh, gorgeous red dress if there's someone else in that role or if the role uh, doesn't exist at all whatever they do with it but i mean it's a different piece of tv it's a different show, so let's just enjoy it for 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 what it is. And what as a fan or what as a sci-fi fan, what would you like to 
one day I'm making a new reboot or whatever, what would you like to be in it? Some kind of same stories or some kind of uh, same species or... Uh, um, you mean what I'd like for that new show? Yeah. Uh, if they make it? I think um, maybe like explore like the areas uh, or the stories that were left unexplored in the reimagined series like uh, like other stories that could fit in the general story we have already seen mm. and we're familiar with right or maybe just do like something else entirely yeah okay just maybe pick the characters and uh, maybe all of them or not i don't know and uh, like develop a, like a different story with it right mm. so there was a point in um the series that some of the characters are hallucination of uh, the silent uh, yeah. that is connected to them in a way do you have any answers or prediction about it what how that can be how can they be in their heads yeah well that's a tricky one because bsg plays a lot with with this kind of tricks like the the opera house as well and the visions uh, that some characters uh, share certain visions and some characters are in each other's minds right and it's it's fun to watch but if you think about it, if you want to like logically understand it, it's uh, it gets tricky, and you don't get an answer to that during the series, right? And, and this is a spoiler. <laughs> I don't know if it's spoiler, but uh, there are few things that are, are very uh, very well wrapped up in the series, and others are not. And this entire thing of someone being in uh, someone else's mind uh, is not answer. We don't get an answer for that, as we don't get an answer for Starbucks, um, like vanishing in thin air, mm, right? Yeah. At the, in, in, in the finale. So um, the point, I think to me, the point is life. I mean, real life, our life has a very great deal of mystery as well and many things we, we still don't know and I, I don't know if in many years from now uh, many of the questions we do have now about the universe the conscience what it is if there are other universes uh, or what um, like in our universe the different mysteries the physics and, and everything I don't know uh, what answers we will get in 20 or 30 years right as as as, as the human race as as, as species but uh, to me the key when watching bsg and watching this uh, head six head about or this opera house this starbucks vanishing is like i get the poetry there is in it and i don't probably need to have everything explained to me if it makes sense from a mysterious or from from a from a from an emotional side, from I mean, I'm okay with mystery. Uh, mm -hmm. If if we, I think in a way, life would be a much more boring uh, place to be if we knew all the answers. If uh, if we weren't allowed to imagine this, this kind of tricks and accept them as part of uh, fiction, but also as part of life, sometimes we there's so much we don't know about our lives, about our universe, about physics, about uh, I don't know black holes, you name it. Uh, that we we can't really like get upset or angry because uh, some things that happened in the PSG universe or any other universe, I don't know, Star Trek, Star Wars, whatever, right, are not fully explained to us. Mystery is part of life. We don't even know who we are ourselves. We don't know ourselves like 100%, right? There are these dark areas that we don't know. So 
why not? Why why so no, I don't I I really don't have an answer for that. But I think it's because it never bothered me to see that. Right? Okay, yeah, was... because for me when uh when we when I started in uh those episodes uh, and it far it was started with uh, that doctor Baltar um I was I was very confused about it because I didn't know okay is this a real person or is this a hallucination yeah and of course when you are watching the series longer and longer it started to click from oh okay hallucination and that was the part that was uh, I think that was one of the scenes that Balto was sitting somewhere and uh, he had a hallucination next to him and uh, the real person next to him of Cylon in that in this case that was really that you could say okay angel uh, devil in a way you know and <laughs> Yeah, that was. Then you could. Then you realize. Okay, now I understand why or whatever in um, is in what an illusion was or not. And there were, like I said, there were there were characters or people that you were thinking, oh, that's just a human. That's how we know him. And then at the end, yeah, you realize, oh, they were a Cylon, and. I think that was one of the the great thing too is that they have two types of silence the machine silent the real machine silent and you have the human silent and that's what we didn't have in the original series by the way but so the whole concept of this series is a little bit different but I really liked how it involved although it was uh, sometimes it was they went very quick in episodes uh, mm -hmm. the pace was very qu quick and fast and no wonder that they make the the last episode uh, about one and a half hour instead of 45 minutes although I must say I really love the last episode with all the battles and all the complots that's coming together and finally um, I think that is the silent cyborg that is sending them to Earth. And um, yeah, that is so... I think that is one of the, the, the great things of this series is... Um, yeah, it's reality. It can be reality. But also, you could see in the end of the episode uh, in the series, you could see people were afraid of the silence. But after that, they because they are also their friends, they start... Um, accepting them. Yeah, yeah, and because they realize at some point that uh, they have a common goal, a common like purpose, silence and humans, right? And they're only going to reach it if they cooperate. And still, there's this going like back and forth because some silence don't want that, don't want to collaborate, and some humans understandably don't want either right yeah uh, so um but that's one of the things that makes the series like richer uh because it keeps challenging your point of view all the time and sometimes you side with humans sometimes you side with with silence right and sometimes your favorite characters do absolutely awful things and you find yourself like questioning why it was why was I rooting for, for, I don't know, for roasting, for instance, it happened to me a couple of times, um, probably with every other character, right? Uh, I think that's one of the, one of the reasons why BHG is so, so, so brilliant. And it's because it challenges your, your point of view. And yeah, with, with the silence and with, um, with humans, this entire idea of identity as well, right? We, we, talked about it before already so um i think it's complexity mm. in the end i mean it's it's about complexity i mean do you want to make a show that it's like black black and white like good people bad people the villains or the the, the evil evil ones 
and the good ones, the good guys, or do we want to make a show that makes people think, that makes people uncomfortable, very <laughs> uncomfortable sometimes. And I found myself, I couldn't binge watch BSG. I mean, I could watch one episode. If I was lucky, uh, I could maybe watch two a day. But I, I don't think it's a show you can easily like watch uh, in in a weekend or in a week or in a couple of couple of weeks and really grasp what it's talking about. I will yeah. say and it's... It's, it's too intense emotionally too. Like I had to stop like this sinking and like breathe for a couple of days and then come back to it. Right. Yeah. I must say it is a really heavy material to watch. It's not very yeah, what we say, fluffy in this way of, uh, like, for example, uh, a Christmas love story or whatever. It's right. You really think, you really kind of think of, okay, uh, what's happening? And I, but I do remember, I, although it's heavy, it's dark, it's in a way chaotic, uh, how things go, yeah. uh, Especially the battles, and I remember that with uh, Babylon 5 as well. There are great battles, but so chaotic that I was thinking, uh, do I really need to watch this? And <laughs> But what I do like about these uh, battles is that they also uh, improve themselves. And like, for example, if you see... Uh, the launching of the fighters in uh, from the Galactica is really cool. They, it, that's the same concept as in the old one, but they also have, for example, they made, Chief had made a stealth fighter. Yeah. And you could see in that way that they people are uh, evolving. Yeah. Not only as asylum, but also in like people in how can we make our fleet better and that's what i uh there was a moment when admiral adama was checking um the galaxy of uh, the galactica and the old girl was talking to him like i can't do this anymore and you see him she was cracking and all everywhere and you see adama uh, completely falling down and say, "Oh God, I have to say well, goodbye." Yeah. Yeah. I have to say goodbye to my girl. But that was also the beautiful scene when they put all the um, ships to watch the sun because they were already on Earth. And he went. Uh, he flew away the Galactica as last one, and I think that was also the moment he could pass it off okay i have to say goodbye she was my life but now i have a life on earth yeah what was really a, d a double side because he lost his love of life the president laura of course she died and um that was another thing that there was a moment and i thought she was on the sh a silent ship she was negotiating yeah. about something and yeah yeah um, I remember I was thinking about myself on, is she a Cylon or is she just human? Is she, I couldn't figure that out at that moment, but yeah, I really loved it. And, um, I don't know what your reaction is on all of this from, uh, um, well. I, I like that you mentioned the scene where all the ships are like launched into the sun, right? I, like uh, that was one of the scenes that uh, created uh, controversy about the finale, right? Because it's like it's not logical that uh, you get rid of uh, all of uh, your technology. But um, f uh, from a logical point of view, it doesn't work probably, but from a as a symbol that we as humans need to get rid of what came before, what we had before in order to embrace the new, right? Mm -hmm. That way it works. 
perfect divine. I mean, and it's beautiful. And it's also an emotional scene because you have spent like the, you know, all these uh, episodes and, and seasons with those ships. And Galactica has like a personality of its own, right? It's like yeah. a character. Yeah. So uh, it's really an emotional um, moment. Uh, I admit that I spent most of the finale crying. I cry uh, with Galactica uh, flying into the sun. I cry with uh, Rosalind Stassin. I cry with Chief. I cry with everyone. I cry with Baltar. I cry with everyone, right? So uh, it's very emotional for me. And it was hard to watch the first time. But at the same time, it's very rewarding. It's very rewarding for all the characters. They, they get a resolution, they get an outcome, they get an answer, whatever that answer is to their, to their, their journey and their struggles, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, that's something I, I, I really like. And I, re I really like the idea that you have to like, uh, leave behind where you came from in order to, to, to be ready to make room for, for, for the next, next stage or whatever life is going to bring you next right i don't know what else i maybe i'm rambling and i forgot your your question a little bit but uh, my question was um what do you think of all uh yeah what the battles and how uh they launched the vipers and how yeah i like the battles i sometimes say and i especially like the battle the, the final battle in, mm. in, in day yeah. right that's the, the, such a meaningful uh final that battle itself is like a symbol also of everything that they they have come to stand for hum, humans and silence and and uh, what i like of that last battle and those last episodes is like you can see that uh, uh, during the series you have been identifying like the humans like the humans are the good guys and the silence are the bad guys and mm. it, in that battle that's not the case anymore yeah right yeah that's yeah. not the case anymore it's like um, adama draws a line and everyone picks a side and and uh, and it's a personal choice and you have humans and silence on both sides of, of, of that line for many different reasons. One of the things I like of the battles, and I didn't realize it uh, uh, until I read it some more, is uh, like the absence of sound during, during, the, during the battles. Right? There's no sound in space, like sound can't, can't travel, can't transmit, right? And um, that's something that um, Ron Moore uh, and, and his team tried to, to reflect truthfully, right? To, to reflect like, so there are some sort of uh, like an echo or something like that, but uh, the sound is muffled. Right? You, you, you're not really mm -hmm. hearing like, like the explosions and, and, and all this, this kind of stuff. And in a way, I think it makes it makes the the experience of watching it more powerful because you're it's like like watching fireworks and seeing them but not being able to hear them right in a way uh so you uh, it draws your attention more more effectively than it probably would if you were hearing the all the noise and the and the explosions and the and all, all that stuff that stuff I must admit that I was not, I mean, the battles are not one of the main things for me in BSG. I mean, they're fine, but it, they're, they're, I think they're well done uh, in many ways, but it's, it's not what I'm more interested in, right? This being said, I remember a few scenes that take place uh, when, during battles that are, are really fantastic. So uh, even even if I'm not very much into like um, uh, space battles, uh, I still I think BSG manages to, to like the uh, even if you're just watching vipers and, and, and raiders fight, 
uh, you never forget like it's a human like a like a human drama behind right mm. like, like you're so very clear what they're fighting for uh, and you're so you're so clear about what's at stake in every scene right mm -hmm. that, that even if uh, the all the, the fireworks of the of the space bottles are not really interesting to you, which could be my case. Uh, you you still are like watching attentively to see the outcome, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, that's 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 very well done. I think that's very well done. I read a book uh, some time ago about. Um, it was written by Kevin Grazier, who was the science advisor of BSG and probably many other shows. And he explained this thing about sound traveling or rather not traveling in in, in space and how BSG like uh, was not uh, properly reflecting how physics work in space. Right. And I remember him saying, and it's an interesting book because you learned uh, a lot of, about physics as well as you go, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. in, in, in physics says that this works this way, and then BSG does someone else, something else, right? So I mean, they're not really reflecting how physics uh, should work. But um, this guy Kevin said in the end in that book, like, well, it's fiction. It, it's it's okay to reflect a reality properly to a point, but uh, come on, let's let's play along, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like it doesn't matter. It's 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 TV, and it's about also uh, like having fun and believing. For instance, also that um, one of the things that BSG uh, uh, does, and in reality, is very hard to reproduce or not possible not not currently currently not possible still to reproduce is gravity on the ships right like people can walk <laughs> how that's possible but I, we know that it, it doesn't work that way in real life right? mm -hmm. we we play along so this this kind of stuff um, it was it was interesting to 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 hear about so what do you think uh, about the storyline in overall the whole series? The, the storyline. Oh, wow. There's a lot of different storylines. <laughs> <laughs> What's the storyline? Okay, the, 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 the journey, the trip, com going from the destruction, the complete obliteration of your world to finding... Uh, a new place to to start a new right that's and, and everything that happens in between for everyone okay i think we have a lot to learn from watching bsg in that sense like how 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 you can go from a point if in your life where everything's crumbling everything's falling apart like uh, and all of us have have been in that place at some point, right? If you are a certain age, and some people sadly at, at a very young age have found themselves already uh, lost in life. And I, uh, one of the things uh, I remember a line, and it, I think it's um, a character says it to Starbuck. Uh, close to the finale in one of the last episodes uh, sometimes lost is where you need to be and the fact that you don't know uh, your purpose doesn't mean you don't have one mm -hmm. i think that sums up quite well the bsg journey from going to a place where everything's lost and you're alone and uh, everything you loved, everything you knew about yourself, about your life has disappeared. How you rebuild yourself, how you rebuild your relationships, how you figure out um, what are the things that matter. 
that still matter, how, how you retrieve uh, and take with you for that journey, everything that may still be useful and that still makes you human, that is still worth keeping, right? And how you carry all that and your grief and your challenges and your um, your flaws, your defeats or your questions to a different point where you start to feel it's a daybreak and you start to feel that you can start from a different place, that you are a different person in a way, but also you brought with you everything that was worth keeping. Um, and the idea of redemption, the idea that, uh, that it's possible to, to for us humans to like start over again, to get a second chance if we fight hard enough, and if we are brave enough to let go as well, mm -hmm. right? I think that's, uh, for me, the journey, the entire storyline and the entire journey of PSG is about that. It's about yeah. personal growth and, and, and learning al uh, along the way and keeping the faith. And knowing that uh, no matter how dark your starting point is, there's light waiting for you ahead. Yes, and there has to be someone who is kicking your ass like Starbuck did by uh, Admiral <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, yo, what are you doing as the Admiral? But he, Admiral Adama didn't... Um, had the overview of what uh, he let his personal feelings too much uh, in his uh, opinion and then she came to him and she screwed him over <laughs> and she had to kick his ass and now you have to go back and uh, redeem yourself and that was also the moment I thought after that um, the XO came to Adama and then they start talking and then you could see that Adama was accepting uh, the silence in that way. But I really was thinking, oh my God, you really are going to kick your ass. Uh, <laughs> high ranking officer, how dare you? <laughs> and there was also that, um, there was one scene and I really loved that. Uh, Starbuck was, I thought she, no, she wasn't captured by the silent, but she was, she has crashed down somewhere and she uh, took a silent rider and she yeah. actually, that was the first time she uh, and everybody uh, captured a, sail, a silent raider and um, I remember Leah Adama was pretty freaked out when she flew next to him and he could see you under the silent ray, the Starbucks. So that was how she came back. And I was thinking, oh my God, okay. That must be a shock for all of them. Yeah, I, I, that's a lovely moment. That's a lovely moment when, when Lee Adama realizes that she's flying, like she's doing the same kind of uh, like flying. flying along with him, right? And doing the, all the same movements and all the same. The, and he realizes that um, it must be her, right? And uh, it's a very cool moment. And uh, it's very, it's emotional as well. And uh, it reflects very well something that I think is a recurrent theme uh, in BSG, which is connection. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of the most um, relevant, meaningful, emotional, uh, compelling moments in BSG are about human connection. Yeah. And human connection is also what makes them all uh, like overcome all the challenges. And yeah. connection with the enemy is what finally gets them home to their new yeah. home. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot. Uh, uh, of connection has a lot to, 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 to do or is present during the, the, the entire series in many moments and it's one of the like uh, like this it's right there at this, the spine 
right? The, the yeah. spine of the, the, the storyline. Well, I think uh, um, Lee and Starbuck are resembling or to the bond of uh, what military people have. They say the bro brotherhood band connection. And yeah. of course, it, they used to be lovers, but um, now they're still, you could see that when they're flying together, they know exactly what another would do or a flying what formation or whatever. So yeah. that is one thing I always also liked. And yeah. yeah, it's just that same brotherhood you would expect from military people. And even Adama and the XO are having that kind of a uh, bond. And also with the under officers and whatever. Um, but what I do realize is that Adama, when the, how more we see of Adama in the end part of the series, uh, we can see how more humanized he is and like with exploding of explosion uh, uh, emotions and um, I think that makes also the series a kind of um, the series how it is yeah and it's more realistic than for example if we see in in Star Trek uh, Star Trek is of course in that kind of way also a little bit realistic but if we talk about the uh, characters it's just you could see so much more emotion in here that you really could see uh, feel okay I'm in the same room with them yeah I think that's probably uh, that's intentional right uh, the creators of the show wanted to make a human drama in space they yeah. didn't want to make a space uh, thing per se. They wanted a human drama uh, like set in space. And that's one of the things that uh, explains, that's what explains uh, what you said about being it being realistic and being emotional. And that's, be, that's why the connection between the characters is so important. And this kind of brotherhood in the military, like you were saying beho before, right? And they really behave like family. And at first, the family is just the Galactica, the crew. But then the family becomes the entire fleet. Because it's yeah. just a bunch of them. I mean, it's 50,000 at the beginning mm -hmm. of the series. And just 30, 36 or something like that when, when they arrive at Earth. So it's really not that many people. And they behave like family, and because they do that, and because they are able to um, to save what is left of, of their humanity, of their connection with others, is uh, uh, that's one that's one of the key things that takes them to the to their to their final destination, which is a new planet, and it's a new. It's a new beginning, right? I, I really like how it reflects on the military as well. Like the tough guys. Um, Stop. And this, yeah. And this episode, uh, the Final Cut episode, where they, there's this reporter, which journalist, who wants to make a, a, a like record all the people in the Galactica and their their stories and you start to see them not, not just I mean they're playing with us because uh, the purpose of uh, of that um, of that work this journalist is doing is to show uh, the Galactica Galactica crew as people with their struggles with their uh, like uh, the the value of the work they are doing for everyone in the fleet right and everything but it also works for us as viewers right it gets all of them closer to us mm -hmm. it makes realize that they're not just fighters and that this show is not just about them as fighters as as a crew of military ship in a time of war uh, 
they're going to make us see them as humans and they're flawed they're they're struggling with i don't know all kinds of, of issues they they had losses too they lost their families they can't sleep they uh, i don't know whatever it is right uh, and uh, i think that's really that's one of the things that makes it makes it compelling mm-hmm. right that they get us to see them as 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 humans and and they form a family they really are family and that family is not like the the stereotype that we have of the military like people who are like robots mm. right? like robots that uh, like they don't feel they just perform a task they don't question they don't nothing mm. no people these people question authority these people and adama is softy many in, in many different moments right and he's the head of the military but he cares about his crew um and i mean that's more realistic but because yeah. that's more what it is i mean we're people everyone is a person is a different person with struggles with um, defeats with uh, worries with uh, moments of joy with losses with grief with everything and that's why it's realistic and that's why it's relatable they're all relatable uh relatable doesn't mean likable all the time right like not all of them are likable or not all of them are likable uh all the time of of course we have as viewers we have our preferences but you can relate to them you can see where they're coming from each and every one of them yeah right military or civilian you mm-hmm. can tell why they are behaving as they are behaving in a certain moment yeah and i remember uh if they have the transition from human to cylon is that they have at first they have a uh some kind of a uh dark defensive uh aggressive behavior and then because of probably processing what they're going through they become softer and more likable in that way although some of them are not i remember that uh with um the the wife of the exo mm-hmm. i can't stand her but okay <laughs> um yeah it was very different with her and um talking about all those new things. Let's talk a little bit about New Caprica because I think that is also a, a new uh, big chapter in the whole series is that they find a place and but they got overflowed and raided with yeah. Cylons. And then the whole shenanigan and the mayhems coming to get because they captured people and they changing them into Silence. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very challenging storyline, and it's very hard to watch. And there's so much to explore and to talk about. Uh, if you think about New Caprica and how they get there in the first place, right? Like voting from voting for a different person, and Laura Roslin wants to steal that election, which is wrong. Of course, it's not ethical to, to, to steal an election. Uh, and Adama convinces her not to do it. So she loses the, the election and they settle in that planet, on that planet. And um, it, there's the learning that sometimes making the right, right decisions can lead to terrible consequences and still you should not question that it was the right decision right from a from an ethical moral point of view uh, if you lose the election you have to let go of it and accept it right and not try to cheat uh, but what comes next can be awful 
Mm -hmm. It can be really awful. And um, it's interesting how they make us understand when silence find them in that on the planet. Um, and there, there's uh, this uh, like the resistance and the suicide bombers and all this kind of stuff. And um, it's natural for you as a viewer to just understand in a way what they're doing and at the same time if you uh, uh, think back to to the war of Iraq and everything and, and with the roles reversed right like the we uh, we were we we don't like or we are not used to seeing ourselves as the terrorists and to understand why some people can uh, commit this kind of uh, deeds, this kind of uh, atrocities, right, in name of uh, belief or to resist some sort of occupation. I mean, it's, it's challenging and it's, it's really, I think it's bold and it's brave, especially considering the moment um, uh, when the moment the year, I mean, when this was uh, airing, because I watched, when I watched it, it was many years later, it was 2014, and maybe that war was not that fresh in my mind anymore, right? So I didn't immediately make that, that connection when I was watching the so, show. Uh, but um, it's very brave and it's bold and it's uh, just another example of how BSG likes to challenge you and to put you in an uncomfortable position and to make you understand whether you like it or not, uh, what your enemy, uh, um, uh, I mean, their reasons or their beliefs or what they're fighting for and why, right? Um, at the same time, I think, because I watched BSG uh, many years later, a few years uh, after uh, it finished, to me the connections with uh, the war of uh, Iraq or with 9-11 were, um, were not so clear or were not immediate, which makes me think that to enjoy BSG and to enjoy its complexity um, and to appreciate it uh, or the reason why it's compelling and meaningful in our world today it's uh, uh, it's not just that it reflects the Iraq war or 9-11 very well and it's very relevant uh, for those real world circumstances but that it's relevant because it makes you challenge you, challenges you, and it makes you think. Uh, even if uh, your context or our context in this world today is 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 different, right? Mm -hmm. So many people say that uh, BSG was so compelling and was so acclaimed in that moment because of 9/11, blah blah blah. That's probably true, but that's just is there's so much more to it than just that yeah right and i think the key is that it makes you think it doesn't doesn't let you like uh, watch an episode and walk away and forget about it no mm. it's thinking about it. yeah right and the new caprica yeah. uh, arc uh, that's that's that very clearly i mean there's suicide bombers there's um people killing the ones they love, like like the Thai, like, like Colin Thai and Ellen Thai. There's betrayal, there's rape, there's um, torture, there's there's so much there. And not uh, like, not always the people who perform those things are people we hate sometimes. It's people we like doing that, right? And that's that's uncomfortable to watch. I mean, it makes you think it could be me at some point, right? And it's very complex. Why you 
why you choose to be in the resistance or you choose to join the new Caprica police, which is the entire opposite, right? And join the silence and, and um, or the role of Felix Gaida assisting Walter as president, but also trying to feed the resistance with information. Uh, I mean, it's very hard to judge someone in that situation. And it's usually we shouldn't be so judgmental in general in life, because everybody has the reasons and we should understand where they're coming from. And maybe they're in the they're defending what they're defending because of reasons we don't realize. Or maybe we think from the outside that they are traitors, but they really are trying to use their positions to do some good. And that's not visible. That's not um, evident for for us, right? And I mean in real life, also in the show, of course. Um, there's a lot, really there's a lot in the new Caprica arc, and it's just four episodes. If you take the previous election, it's six episodes in the, the entire run. Uh, but they could probably make an, an entire series about this, if they wanted to. Yeah, yeah. So there was a point in the series that um, the humans had a virus against the Cylon, and... Um, it reminded me of wars that we have known with, well, you can take COVID also in that because it's, um, but it, it was a really a turning point as well for, uh, in the series. How did you experience that? Well, when I was watching it, I was like, okay, there's a virus there. All right. I mean, we had no pandemic going on and it, there was no way to know it was going to become so prescient uh, uh, in just a few years later, right? Um, I think it's interesting in the series, what, what I found interesting about the virus is the entire discussion about how we use this, right? We do we use to kill, use it to kill them, and then we become just like them, like trying to uh, uh, wipe out an entire species from from the universe, uh, or are we able to do better than that, right? And again, you have there are many pros and cons to to each position, and there are many reasons why you could be for or against that decision. That's um, actually, there's two episodes with a virus. And I don't know, because there's this one, the one I'm talking about, that uh, they, the humans get the chance to uh, like wipe the silence out. And there's another one when the um, people are falling sick. And there's this doctor who is like, subtly getting rid of them, like, um, um, like not giving them the right treatment or I don't know what it was exactly but it's kind of uh, taking advantage that there is a virus that, that people from Sagittarius are falling sick to just get rid of them right and it's again to like two different viruses and two different and the, the idea behind it, behind it is probably the same. It's like how how we use this, uh, who gets to decide that someone is worth living and, and are silence someone or are they something, right? And it's not so clear because silence, uh, some of them have proven that they get to decide who they are and they are loyal mm -hmm. to humans. Um, related to the pandemic right now, I think that uh, we could also learn, um, and this is my personal impression, but uh, there were a lot of talks at the beginning of the pandemic saying that this is going to make us 
better, that we are going to learn a lot about ourselves, about uh, how to behave uh, with each other and toward the planet and uh, everything. And um, I'm not quite sure, I mean, the things that happen in your life change you in a certain direction, but you decide what direction you get to decide what direction is that right and i have been I, I have seen people around me in my real life like change for the better like become kinder and help others and this kind of stuff become become more aware of uh, how today's problems are global problems and affect us all regardless of race nationality or this kind of stuff and other people have become because fear makes you uh, uh, often become like more defensive more aggressive sometimes uh, less tolerant like with people who uh, trouble complying with certain rules like for example handicapped people or sick people that uh, have a hard time wearing a mask 24 7 or for a long time right i mean there's there's people react depending or uh, yeah depending on the or on their fears on their hopes on their personal uh, values and beliefs that they have to be there for others or they have to protect themselves um fear can makes us can make us really mean as well right fear is a yeah. powerful feeling and fear is a, it's a dangerous thing and it has to be there when there's a threat and covid and the pandemic is a threat uh, that's that's completely clear i mean for for everyone or or it should be um, but uh, in every situation in life, we have to ask ourselves, uh, and this is something Laura Roslin says in the series, who, who do I want to be, right? Yeah. And this is true with the pandemic as well, and with the, and with the virus, with, uh, with COVID, and with everything that's going on right now. I mean, you, you have to choose, you have the moral responsibility to choose who you are in the middle of this mess we're in right um and that's that's one of the things that bsg shows in 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 a different way because there was not pandemic going on when they uh, shot this uh, this episode um but it, it's something we learn from 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 bsg that, that we can apply here i mean we have to we have to choose who we want to be and we have to uh decide if we let fear rule our actions and decisions makes us make us um, like harder uh, and less kind to other people less tolerant less understanding or if we are going to overcome our fear and and by overcome our fear i don't mean not complain with the rules right it's different <laughs> But at least not let fear dictate our actions, our decisions. Not let fear be the only thing we take into account when uh, when we consider if we are going to a place, or going to see someone, or going to or doing something. Or right, we get to choose, and we have to choose. And that's something that the PSG people, the PSG characters do all the time they choose yeah. who they want to be um so we are coming to an end of this uh, lovely conversation of bsg is there something you'd like to add well thank you that's the first thing i'd like to add for inviting me to to have this conversation with you and to talk about bsg which is something i'm always eager to do because I, I adore this series it's really it's part of me really it's part of who i am right now um and no 
I just hope that more and more people uh, keep watching it because I really, I really think it helps you as a person to to watch shows like like BSG, and it's not the only show that can that can change you for the better. Of course, there are many others as well out there. This is this is the one for me, but you may have others. And thank you to you personally also for um, doing what you do with your podcast about uh, fantasy and sci-fi because there are not many women or rather there's a lot of us women there but um, I think still like this uh, preconception that women are not into sci-fi or are not yeah. part of it and I think sci-fi is one of the places when I have where I have been uh, or I have seen women better represented in all yeah. kinds of right and you're a woman running a podcast on fantasy and sci-fi and i think that's awesome <laughs> really thank you yeah i uh, <laughs> i love to do it i uh like i said before fantasy and sci-fi is just me uh and i had not really many people who i could talk with about it so uh but yeah it the fun part of this podcast is, yeah, meeting new people, talk just about what you really like, et cetera, et cetera. And especially with women, I think it's like um, we have to stand up and say, God, it's not a guy's thing only. Women can do it too, you know? And um, yeah, I think, but I think also a woman has always a different point of view as a man would do, have. Yeah. Uh, Probably, probably in, in many ways we pay attention to different things, and uh, and it's 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 good. I mean, diversity and variety is enriching, right? And we bring a different point of view to the table, and that's I think that's perfect. Yeah, so well, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for joining me today, and. Um, I really, it was really a nice conversation about BSG. And I must say, now I rewatched it, I love it more than I had before. So um, thank you for your conversation and your knowledge and your view of what you think of BSG. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a pleasure, really. It was, I really enjoyed this. Good. Thanks. So, thank you very much, and maybe we talk each other uh, with each other again in a new episode, or and yeah, uh, why not? It could be yeah. BFG. It could be Fringe. Have you watched Fringe? Yeah, that's my second favorite. So, okay. I, if if you want to talk about Fringe at some point, I need to rewatch. So you have to let me know in okay. advance, right? I, I okay. need time to rewatch because I watched that um, many years ago already. But that that's a very, very, very important series for me too. Mm, yeah. Right. And that's a great one. So I'm here whenever you want. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you again. And till next time. Thank you. Till next time. Dear listeners, I'd like to thank you for listening to this podcast. I hope you like it and I try to be diverse as much as I can. Tell me what you think how I'm doing with this podcast. If you have any tips for me how I can do things better, let me know. If you like to talk about this episode or want to comment on this episode, you can reach out on Podbean, the Facebook group, the YouTube channel and the Discord server of Orinda Talks Fantasy and Sci-Fi. I also have a Twitter account especially for this podcast at OTFA. SP. Orinda Talks Fantasy and Sci-Fi is also to listen, follow and subscribe on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcast, the Facebook group and the YouTube channel. In the next episode we will talk about Merlin, the BBC series. I'm your host Orinda, thank you for listening and I will see you next time.